And welcome everybody to another edition of the GSMC Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. As always, I'm your host Kenneth Grunfelder and it's great to have you guys here on this Friday, October 18th. We have a lot to talk about on the show today. Before I get into that, I just want to remind you guys, as always, tip or donate and get your comments recognized. Make sure to hit the Super Chat button in the chat to help create a Super Chat of any thought or comment you may have. Throughout the live broadcast, I will acknowledge it. And it just makes the show more lively, more entertaining between myself, the host, and you guys, the viewers. We appreciate your guys' viewership each and every day, so any contribution you can make to the show means the world to us as we put out content for you guys each and every day. And also, the other way to help out the show is by going to the link at the bottom of the show segment on the ticker gsmcpodcast.net. That is gsmcpodcast.net. So... Let's get into what we are going to discuss for today. So we're going to start off the show. Um, we're going to recap. <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to recap last night's game between the Saints and the Broncos. In the second part of the show, we'll get into the Super Bowl rematch between the Chiefs and the 49ers. Then we'll talk about the other big game in the NFC North between the Lions and the undefeated Vikings. Then in the fourth part of the show, we'll talk about the matchup between C.J. Stroud and Jordan Love. And then in the final part of the show, we'll kind of just go around the league, both in college and in the NFL, and just look at the rest of the matchups uh, for this weekend. So, with that being said, let's get into the first topic, which is talking about last night's game between the Broncos and the Saints. So... I thought this game was going to be low scoring, um, somewhat competitive, but I did have the Broncos winning and the Broncos pretty much dominated this game from start to finish. This was Sean Payton's return to New Orleans for the first time. Uh, The Saints also honored Drew Brees at halftime. So it was good for Saints fans to reminisce on the the good times uh, with those two guys. And, uh, yeah, because the, the, the Saints team that is currently playing right now uh, is not getting it done. And it's funny how early on in the season, you know, the Saints, they put up 40 points in back-to-back weeks. And, you know, you, you thought like, oh, okay, you know, maybe uh, they got something going. Uh, but uh, that is uh, – that was not the case. Um They are, uh, they're not a good football team. And part of that, and Dennis Allen said it after the game, that, you know, they're dealing with a lot of injuries, which I get it. You know, they're missing their top two wideouts. Derek Carr is hurt. Uh, They're missing guys on defense, on the offensive line. So, yeah, I I mean, injuries are going to happen. And, you know, it's really affecting the Saints. But even if the Saints were healthy, you know, they probably, you know, I mean, they probably would have a better record than they do right now. I mean, maybe they win last night. Um, Then again, I don't really know because I did say, you know, with Sean Payton coaching on the other side, he knows the organization inside and out. I I think the Broncos, you know, the way they've been playing, the defense has been playing well. Um, I think they probably still win against a healthy Saints team because also I just don't trust Dennis Allen as a head coach. And and I think he is definitely going to be on his way out. Uh, at the end of the season, and maybe, or maybe even before that. So, but yeah, I, I mean, the Saints after that hot start, you know, they've kind of reverted back to how they've been, um, which is not a very good football team. But I will say, I, you know, this is the first time really that I got to sit down and watch Bo Nix, and I like what I saw last night. Um, you know, right now the Broncos are a team on offense that doesn't have a lot of talent. But, I mean, they do have some good players on offense. Not like they don't have anything. But um, I I did like what I saw from Bo Nix. And, you know, he's very athletic. You know, he can move around in the pocket. He can scramble if he has to. Um, You know, if you get this guy, you know, some more weapons, I mean, I I think he could be a pretty good quarterback. Um, But that's just me. I mean, I know the Saints defense is pretty bad. But I, I definitely see something there with Bo Nix. Um, you know, and he was spreading the ball around a lot, 
last night. And, um, you know, the Broncos, once they really took control of this game, they let the running game handle it. Um, you know, Javante Williams had a very good game last night. Uh, McLaughlin almost broke a, a, a big run for a touchdown but was tackled. Um, you know, they um, – they did what they were supposed to do, and they played good defense. They got a pick six off of Spencer Rattler. wasn't very good, but then again, Saints, the Saints are shorthanded. So, but um, the Broncos right now are four and three on the season. Uh, Bo Nix went sixteen to twenty six for one hundred sixty four yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. The Broncos ran the ball for two hundred twenty five yards. Javante Williams had eighty eight yards on the ground and two touchdowns. Bo Nix had seventy five yards on the ground, had a thirty two yard run at one point during the game. McLaughlin, 35 yards on the ground. Uh, Andrik Estime, uh, their rookie running back, 29 yards on the ground. So, you know, the, the Broncos, they really relied upon the running game last night. And um, Troy Franklin was the leading receiver last night for the Broncos, five receptions for 50 yards. Um, Estime did have a fumble late, so that was the only positive from the Saints defense is they were able to at least create a turnover. Broncos defense, six sacks on the night last night, and and the pick six. And that was by uh, Cody Barton. Uh, he returned that. And then for uh, Spencer Rattler, he went 25 of 35 for 172 yards. And uh, the backup uh, quarterback, well, the other quarterback, the third stringer, uh, Jake uh, Hayner, uh, he had a touchdown in this game. Uh, he went three for four for 38 yards. So we'll see uh, who ends up being the starter next week. Unless they just wanted Rattler, you know, just take him out of the game when it got out of hand. Uh, the Saints really didn't. I mean, they had 97 yards on the ground. Um, <clears throat> uh, Kendra Miller, uh, he had 36 yards on the ground. Spencer Rattler had 34. Javante Williams, 17. Alvin Kamara had 10. Uh, Cedric Wilson caught the only touchdown in this game by the Saints. Uh, so he had six receptions for 57 yards. Uh, Mason Tipton. He had 6 for 45, Forrester Moreau, 2 for 38. Um, but yeah, Spencer Rattler, two fumbles in this game. Um, and for the Saints defense, they did not get to Bo Nix once. No sacks in the game. Um, but yeah, to kind of go through the, the game summary. So both teams exchanged punts to start off the game. Um, Will Lutz had a big day too. He got the Broncos on the board with a 46-yard field goal to make it 3 nothing. Saints then fumbled. Broncos turned that into a field goal. Uh, Will Lutz from 32 yards out. Then in the second quarter, the Saints punted. Broncos turned that into a touchdown drive. Um, Bo Nix connected with Troy Franklin for 30 yards. And then eventually they got down to the 8 and Javante Williams from 8 yards out, scored a touchdown to make it 13 nothing. Then uh, the Saints, they put together a field goal drive. And Groupie kicked a 35-yard field goal. And then the Broncos answered with a field goal drive of their own. Lutz kicked a 52-yarder right before the end of the first half. A lot of field goals, like I said, by Lutz. Third quarter, Saints opened up with punting the football. Uh, like I said, Javante Williams had a 21-yard run. Uh, that If he doesn't get tackled, he he's scoring. Um, but eventually, yeah, they got down to the Saints 20. Will Lutz, another field goal. So I made a 19-3. Saints punted. And then uh, Javante Williams was five yards out uh, later in the drive. Um, scored a touchdown to make it 26-3. More punts. Uh, the Broncos fumbled, like I said. But then um, Rattler got sacked. Actually, so it was a fumble, but Barton caught it off the rebound. And uh, he scored from 52 yards out. Um, and that made it 33-3. to And then the Saints put together a touchdown drive, like I said. And that was to Cedric Wilson. And that was it, 33-10. to 10. So Will Lutz, he went on the night, uh, he went 4-4 four for four on field goals. Uh, the longest one he made was a 52-yarder. Um, Broncos had the ball for over 33 minutes, uh, 22 first downs. Um, total yards of offense, that's what I wanted to go to, uh, if I can find it. So yeah, total yards. Broncos almost scored, uh, almost had uh, 400 yards of total offense to the Saints, 271. Saints actually ran more plays, 66 to 61. But yeah, this was all Broncos, and you know they're they are uh, they're they're a weird team, but 
you know, they're playing good defense. You know, they ran the ball a little bit better last night. Um, you know, Bo Nix is, is doing what he's supposed to do. Um, you know, you got to like the direction that this team is heading in in the long term. Because, like I said, if if they could maybe surround Bo Nix with more talent, you know, like I said, maybe you got something. Because um, I know there was a lot of people that maybe didn't have Bo Nix as a first-round pick. And again, I, I will, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I was an expert on all of these all these quarterbacks. You know, the ones that were taken in the top three, I'm like, okay, these guys are supposed to be really good. And, you know, the number one and the number two overall pick, they're going to be going up against each other next week. A Nance Romo vehicle. Um, but then, you know, Michael Penix and Bo Nix, those guys. Um, J.J. McCarthy getting taken after that. Um, you know, we, we got to see. Um, you know, J.J. McCarthy out for the year. Of course, Michael Penix is sitting behind Kirk Cousins. Um, Drake May, you know, we, we saw him against the Texans last week, and, you know, it was a mixed bag, but you see the talent. Uh, the Patriots got to surround him with more talent. And, you know, with Bo Nix, I mean, the Broncos are 4-3, and three, you know, and, um, you know, we'll see where... <clears throat> Excuse me again. We'll see where the season eventually ends up, but you know, there's definitely things to like about Bo Nix. Um, and uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I really didn't expect the Broncos to win a lot of games this year. I think I had them at like five wins. I mean, they're already at four, so I think they're definitely going to be over five wins by the end of the year. So if their defense continues to play well and if they can run the football, Bo Nix, you know, plays turnover-free football. Because uh, last week against the Chargers, you know, first half they weren't great. Second half the offense kind of woke up a little bit. So, you know, and last night they kind of were able to do whatever they wanted against the Saints defense. Uh, the Saints defense has not been great these last couple weeks uh, between this game and in Tampa or against Tampa. Uh, the Buccaneers putting up 51 points. So, you know, that, that hot start that the Saints had, it's a distant memory now, and they, and they are not a good football team, and it, the South is going to come down to the Bucks and the Falcons. That's what it looks like at this current moment. So, um, But, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this game. What were your takeaways from it? Let me know in the comments. So we are going to take our first break of the show, and then when we come back, we will talk about the Super Bowl rematch between the Chiefs and the 49ers. We'll get into that when we come back from our first break of the show. So with that that being said... Stick around, and we'll be right back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. 